Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanjin. Today we're going to talk about Vanguard's personal investor platform account, whatever you want to call it. Now, I've had a few requests to do a video on this topic, and it's a popular topic, admittedly, both before when they first launched it, and then after they recently made some changes to it in August of 2021, saying, Sanji, can you please have a look at it? What do you think about it? Do you think I should use it to invest in Vanguard ETFs? So in today's video, I'm going to have a look at this particular product, and I'm not going to look at it just in isolation. I want to also look at it comparing it to other products that you could use, like say Comsec and CMC Markets as brokerage platforms. Now, I know Comsec and CMC are not the greatest. I personally use Comsec and I've used CMC in its form when it was part of ANZ eTrade or it ran ANZ eTrade's infrastructure. And also CMC is something that I might consider shifting over to. So that's why I thought, you know, I can only speak from my own experience. I'll use those two as a comparison point. And I'll also finish off by talking about under what circumstances you should consider using the Vanguard personal investor account. Now, obviously, this is all my own personal opinion. This is not financial advice. You should definitely do your own research on it and look at you know other videos, other comparison websites out there to look into it. But hopefully this will help add a bit more data for yourself to consider when looking at this platform. So let's get into it. So the Vanguard personal investor account started back in April of 2020 and it launched to quite a lot of fanfare, especially in the Instagram community, should we say in the personal finance area. A lot of people were excited, I guess, because it's the Vanguard product. You know, everyone loves Vanguard products. I like Vanguard products. I'm a big fan of Vanguard's ETS, VAS, VGS, VGE, VAE. They're all great products. VDHG, heavily liked. I don't use it myself. A lot of excitement. But when you actually looked at the product, it was shocking. I personally didn't. I, when I looked at it, I didn't do a video on it because I thought, I'm such a big fan. If I do a video on this, I will not be saying anything positive about it. You know, the way I look at it, I go into back for Vanguard every day. I've got popular videos on VAS and VGS, two ETFs that you really just start with because they cover Australia and the world. Check them out. And I felt like I was defending Vanguard very consistently because I liked their products, they were doing well. And then when they released this personal investor product, it was like they were asking me to go in bat for them, but they were saying, we want you to go to the MCG to face Brett Lee using nothing but this pen to hit the ball with. That's what they were saying. They were saying, just go out there, give it a best shot, mate, and, and you know, here's the product you, you need to go out and talk about. It was shocking. To just clarify what I mean by it was a shocking product to defend as a Vanguard fan. Here's what they were doing. They were saying you needed to pay a 0.2% account fee for every element of what you'd be holding. And while you didn't have to pay to buy a Vanguard ETF, you didn't have to pay brokerage for it. That was free. You got charged $19 to buy any ASX Direct shares. So... Not other ETFs, by the way, just any of the top 300 shares that you could buy from their investment menu. That's what they were saying. And it was like, I, I can see the narrative around we don't charge you money to buy Vanguard ETFs, but I didn't understand what they were doing around charging 0.2% account fee. Okay, then in July of this year, they realized their mistake. I like to think they realized their mistake and they made these changes and they said, hang on, hang on. We will no longer charge an account fee for the managed funds, the ETFs, or the cash account, but we'll still charge you something for holding ASX Direct shares. We'll go from not charging you anything for brokerage for Vanguard ETFs to now you'll be charged $9 for brokerage for the Vanguard ETFs. And instead of being charged $19 for any direct shares that you might buy, so anything other than Vanguard ETFs, you'll be charged $9 for those trades. So it was a lot of like, oh, let's get rid of those account fees. Let's bring in some tr brokerage fees. I don't, it was, oh, to me, it was more a reflection of how poorly thought out the first iteration was. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, now that these changes have come into play, the Vanguard personal investor product seems a little bit more reasonable, but is it more reasonable than things like CMC or Comsec? Let's have a look. 
So let's throw up one of my legendary tables of comparison, the Vanguard Personal Investor Account, Comsec, and CMC. CMC is a well-known product internationally, and I think in Australia, in terms of like the Reddit forums and a lot of forums, it's well-known. It's not that well-talked about in terms of Instagram and TikTok for some reason. Obviously, maybe there's a bit of a difference there, but CMC is a very respectable product. Uh, ANZ E-Trade, if you use that, is actually using the CMC product underneath it, at least last I checked. So let's start with brokerage. $9 for the personal investor account from Vanguard. That's quite low, that's actually very good. And it's flat $9 all the way up to the maximum transaction, which I think is $500,000. So some brokerage firms will have like, you know, a low amount, and then once it hits this certain percentage number, then it becomes that percentage. Whereas with Vanguard, you can basically, you basically charge $9 per trade all the way up to $500,000. So that's pretty good. Again, say a Comsec, which is $10, Let's be honest, Comsec was never very good for brokerage charges. Uh, up to $1,000, it's $10, and anything over $1,000, up to $10,000, it's $19, $20 pretty much. And then from there, it kind of iterates up even more. CMC, again, is around $11, and I think this one varies based on the amount of trades you do, but it's about $11 for CMC. So on the surface, yes, the Vanguard Personal Investor account is quite good for any kind of trade. Because remember, you can buy both Vanguard ETFs and ASX Direct shares. I will go into a bit more detail there, but you can generally buy most top 300 shares. Then there's the account fee. Now, for any holding you have with Vanguard for their direct shares, so any non-ETF holding you have with Vanguard's personal investor account, you'll be charged 0.1%. That's... I mean, it's whatever it is, but the simple fact is no one else does that. Comsec doesn't do that. CMC doesn't do that. I don't know why Vanguard does that. Just like I don't know why they had any kind of account fee in the early days. And I used to hammer them in my videos when I would indirectly talk about it because I was too angry to talk about it directly. I would say, why are you doing this? Why are you charging an account fee? It's probably just because you can. Because you think the average Australian will pay for it. You can't do that, Vanguard. And they've learned from their mistakes, but they're still charging you 0.1% if you have ASX Direct shares, so anything other than a Vanguard ETF. I don't want to say any more than that. My blood pressure will go too high. Share selection. What can you actually buy through the Vanguard product? Now, on their website and in their PDS documents, they say you can buy the Vanguard ETFs and the ASX Top 300 shares. So the Vanguard ETFs, I'll throw up the list. It's going to be pretty small for you to read, but it's basically all their Vanguard ETFs. VAS, VGS, VGAD, all the usual suspects. That's fine. That's good as you should, for $9 brokerage. Then they also say you can buy the ASX top 300 companies by market cap. You know, that's a good selection. It's basically everything that's in VAS, ASX 300 tracker, you can buy individual shares within there. That's fine. But you cannot buy other ETFs from other companies. So you can't buy anything from BD shares. You can't buy anything from iShares or BlackRock's products. You can't buy anything from State Street. You can't buy anything from Vanek. I don't know why you would buy anything from Van Eck, but you can't if you're considering it. You just can't. It's not like they'll charge you a massive fee. You just straight up can't buy these things. That in itself is okay because you can do a bit of a split hybrid strategy, but you can't do it. And you can only buy the companies in terms of top 300 on the ASX. So you can't buy like small mining companies or small biotech companies that might flip you know, they're under like they're like two cents right now that they might go up to $20 one day. You can't do that. That's just not on there because it wouldn't appear on a top 300 list. But then you compare that to Comsec and CMC, there's no restriction. You can buy anything. You can buy Vanguard ETFs, you can buy BD shares, you can buy individual shares, you can buy large companies, you can buy small companies. Same with CMC. You can even buy bonds with some of these platforms. So there's a limitation there. In terms of dividends, now, this is more a function of how the structure of the holding is set up rather than the platform itself. But with Vanguard, when you get any dividends, you can't automatically reinvest them. You have to take that amount, it arrives in your cash account, and then you have to manually buy more Vanguard shares to get it done. All right, that's one thing. Whereas when you buy it through Comsec or CMC, 
you can have automatic reinvestment. You can have DRP plans activated. D Vanguard's own DRP plans can be used. However, when you invest in a Vanguard ETF through the Vanguard Personal Investor Platform, you can't use the Vanguard DRP plans. I don't want to talk about it. You just can't do it. Chess of Custodian, here we go. There's about 50 million videos and articles out there on chess or custodian or whatever. What you need to know is Comsec CMC, chess. Vanguard, not chess. Let's just say that. That, I'm not going to get into is that good or bad in terms of if one thing collapses or another thing collapses. I don't think that's so much the risk. The issue here is more the case of if you already have shares in other companies or other brokerage platforms like a Comsec or a CMC, you cannot directly transfer them across to Vanguard's holding. You'll have to sell everything down and then rebuy it in the Vanguard account. Similarly, if you were to leave the Vanguard Personal Investor account, you say you have $100,000 worth of investments in Vanguard's Personal Investor account, and you wanted to shift it over to CMC one day or Comsec, you'd have to sell it all down and then rebuy it in Comsec and CMC. Why is this an issue? Well, if you have to sell everything down, that could trigger a tax event. Speak to your financial advisor and accountant about it. But that can be a bit of a negative event for you. And then you have to pay for brokerage. I don't think that's that big a deal, but that's just what I'll say. If you have accounts with Comsec or CMC and you want to transfer them across or you want to transfer into Comsec or CMC, it's easy because it's just they take your holding from CMC and they transfer it across to Comsec. That's fine. You don't have to sell everything down and rebuy it. It's just cut across very easily. So again, like I said, I don't want to get into that big piece, but it's a it's a notable thing to know for your long-term strategy. Remember, if you're going to get into investing, you might be doing it for 10, 20, 30 years. You do have to do a little bit of forward planning on what the future might look like. And you're going to inevitably want to switch platforms at some point. Having things in a chess kind of setting, just it's a bit easier is all I'm saying. But do your own research, read your own Reddit articles on it, you'll be fine. So after taking all that into account, under what circumstances should you get the Vanguard Personal Investor account? <laughs> oh, you're being serious. Oh, <laughs> give us a second. Give us a second to get my thoughts together. Thanks for waiting. Okay, so... Here are a couple of situations when you might want to consider Vanguard's personal investor account. In my opinion, do your own research. First thing is, if you think you will only buy Vanguard ETFs for the rest of your life, and you don't ever plan on leaving the Vanguard investor platform, and you're happy to do manual investments, reinvestments, which you know, admittedly is not that big a deal, then the Vanguard platform is actually not a bad choice. Under no circumstances should you consider buying or using the Vanguard platform to buy shares from anything other than Vanguard because they're basically punishing you with that 0.1% account fee. Don't get lured in by the $9 transaction fee, the $9 brokerage fee, because they're basically saying, oh, you're going to buy something other than Vanguard? No worries, no worries, $9 transaction fee, but then we'll stab you in the heart with a 0.1% account fee. Sorry to use such violent imagery, but you get the idea. I, I don't know why you would use the Vanguard platform to buy shares outside of Vanguard. That's what I'm thinking. Now, let me be a bit more mature about this. Naturally, that's probably got you thinking about, well, what about a blended approach? Can you do a bit of everything? Admittedly, yes, that is potentially an option. So let's say you don't use Vanguard to buy anything other than Vanguard. That kind of makes sense, and then you just basically stuck with Vanguard for the rest of your life in terms of the platform. You can still buy Vanguard ETFs at CMC, Comsec, NAB Trade, Self Wealth. You can do all of that. You just your Vanguard holdings within the Vanguard personal account. If you ever want to transfer them across, you have to sell everything, deal with the tax event use the money, rebuy it in your other accounts. So that's really the only two situations when I would consider using the Vanguard platform is if I only wanted to buy Vanguard ETFs for the rest of my life, or if I wanted to have a bit of a blended approach and I only use the Vanguard platform 
to only buy Vanguard ETFs and left them there. And then I had to remember to manually reinvest my dividends, which admittedly is not that big a deal, but you have to remember to do that. And then I used other platforms like Self-Wealth, Comsec, CMC, whatever you want to do to buy other ETFs like from BetaShares, Vanek, whatever, and my other individual share purchases like, you know, small mining companies, buy biopharmaceutical companies, whatever it is, you can use other platforms and you can have that kind of blended approach. That's that's a very reasonable thing. Let me just say, I do have a lot of respect for the team at Vanguard. I think products like VAS, VGS, these are all great products. VDHG, well researched. You know, I'm looking forward to their superannuation product one day. I just think this, when it first came out, was shocking. It's now a little bit better, but I'm not... I'm not running to get this product anytime soon, is all I'm saying. And I would be weary to recommend it to anyone. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider checking out some of my other videos around ETFs, like the VAS VGS video. You know, big fan. Vanguard do make good products every once in a while, just not this one. Please also consider checking out my Instagram page and also consider signing up to our mailing list. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.